Okay. You guys wanted it. So here it is. My new podcast station. I have a light. I have a super nice camera that was recommended to me by Jeremy Ryan Slate. Whoop, whoop to Jeremy. Um, uh, everything's here. So I'm just going to jump right into it. This is going to be the uh, conditional acceptance that I told you guys referring to all of my amazing fans on Facebook. Mwah, hello. Um, this is the conditional acceptance that I was telling you guys about. The video, I was going to break it down. Uh, $13,000. Uh, pretty effortless. Uh, I had a collection agency, so here I'll break it down for you. We had a thirteen. We had an audit on a workers' comp policy that ended up going to a collection agency, and then we did a conditional acceptance with the collection agency in order to eliminate thirteen thousand dollars in debt. So here we go. Let's jump right into it. So here's the conditional acceptance. Let me. Pull it up. Uh, there we go. That should do it. And perfect. You guys should be able to see this. So I wrote this on behalf of somebody else. I replaced some of the personal information. Uh, obviously, one, two, three, conditional acceptance avenue doesn't really exist. Uh, so here we go. So we have the date on the upper right. We have conditional acceptance in the center at the top. And then we have the person's name who is writing the conditional acceptance with their title of beneficiary. Okay. We have the hyphen in between the first and the middle name. We have the colon. And then we have family of. And then the last name. We have without prejudice, which uh, having this here uh, reserves all rights, human rights, any type of rights that uh, they may assume we're giving away by writing this documentation. CO, that means care of. Basically what that means is that um, there's a zip code here and they can actually use the zip code to, to place the person in a federal zone. So long story short, CO basically means I don't actually live here, I just accept mail here, which is good because you don't want anything that would place you as a resident in any sort of certain area. So you should use CO or a PO box or something like that on all of your conditional acceptances. And uh, if you want to, you can you can place brackets around the, um, for the four corner rule, which basically means, it's actually very similar to HTML code. When you do the, the four corners rule, it, um, make sure I have enough space here to show you guys. Yeah, uh, the the brackets here, it basically it's a four corners rule. So what that does is it, it prevents this section from actually being part of the binding contract. You can do that. Or hell, you could just do this. Just have California or uh, New Jersey or whatever. And uh, you don't want to use the abbreviation. The abbreviation is trademarked. So what you want to do is you can just do the state. Hell, you could just do this. Uh, ideally, you'd use a P.O. box. I use P.O. boxes for everything now. So that would be the ideal way to do it. So it would be, you know, P.O. box 1563 and North Hollywood, Calif uh, California. Now, for a P.O. box, you can use the um, zip code. It doesn't matter. So you can say uh, 91, whatever, 3475 or whatever it is. Okay, that's the ideal way to do it. Uh, you don't need the CO. If you're going to use a PO box, you can just go like that. If you're going to be using your address, you want to do CO and then address uh, 123 conditional acceptance lane. And then you want to do just leave the zip off or do uh, brackets around the zip if you really want to be extra careful about it. All right. The trustees and their principles. Notice to agent is notice to principal. Notice to principal is notice to agent. That just means that, so an agent is one who works on behalf of someone else. So, uh, and and you want to make sure at all times, here's my trustee, where is it? Trustee Black's Law 4th Edition. So if I wanted to look it up, I would go to the very top. And I think you can even use a search function agent. 
that's easier said than done. There's a lot of agents here, so we'll just quickly find this agent. Agent, I just want to be your agent so badly. Well, don't you want to be my agent? I just want to be your, be your hey, hey, agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Agent. This is really annoying looking through here sometimes. This like takes forever, but is wife it? Agent. Where is it? Agent, agent. Oh, there it is. Oh my God, we found it. A person authorized by another to act for him. One instructed with another's business. So, and there's 8 billion other definitions, but basically that, that does a good job of, of, of clarifying it. Um, what you want, and here it is, just in case you couldn't see it in the video, right here, first one. So like a lawyer or a secretary or, you know, whatever. It could be anything, um, literally anybody. So it's a beautiful thing to put in your conditional acceptance. Um, the trustees. So the trustees would mean like the person that you're writing to. Like, for example, here we're writing to Steve, family of Wolf, who is an executive of McCarthy, Burgess and Wolf, which is the um, this is the um, the collection agency. So he would be a trustee of our account because he's supposed to be taking care of us and that kind of thing. Uh, they're trying to always flip the script and make uh, us the trustees, but they're not. They're actually the trustees and, and we're the beneficiaries. So uh, you're basically just clarifying that of which is, and it's, it should be very clear. But if you don't uh, say it, they can assume other things. And then the way law works is if they assume other things and you don't rebut it, then it becomes truth and law. So anything you can say to clarify anything is always good. Some people go really overboard with that. It's really annoying. But to find that middle ground where it's like not 15,000 pages of clarification, but it's it's clear anyways, is really kind of the way to go. I try to make these as readable as possible for the person who's going to be reading them. I've seen a lot of people who want to write all this crazy ass shit and it's like, okay, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's not fantastic. In my opinion, you want to make this somewhat readable as readable as you can. So number one, we've got Steve family of Wolf executive of McCarthy Burgess and Wolf, uh, certified mail return receipt requested. We have the number and then we have, uh, Barry family of Zyke Zyskind. And he's the CEO of Amtrust Financial. So basically, because um, because this is where the account's coming from is Amtrust Financial. So these guys, uh, Burgess and Wolf, uh, these guys actually took over the account uh, as collection agent. And I asked him, I said, "Do you do you guys buy the debt, or did you just get approved to um, to collect the debt?" And they didn't buy it. They actually were just working on behalf of Amtrust, which was still holding the debt. Stuff like that's important because you need to find out, did they actually buy it or are they just contracted to collect it? It's a big, big, big difference between those two things. So it's a good thing to find that out. So uh, Barry is the CEO, sent him one at his main address here, certified mail return receipt. Then we go down and we have with completion of service and designation of witnesses too. So what does that mean? That means basically... Uh, you have trustees and your trustees are the um, uh, attorney general of your state, the eternal attorney general of the United States. These are people who essentially work for you as trustees, right? So Merrick E. family of Garland, he is, um, that is the United States attorney general. So what's happening is, is that when they sign for this document via the... Um, certified mail, what they're doing is they are agreeing to witness the fact of this contract being uh, served. So when you send something through the mail, certified mail isn't necessarily technically the way it works, but everyone does it certified mail pretty much. It's actually registered mail. That's the way you actually serve someone through the mail properly. Um, uh, this is the first 
conditional acceptance I've ever really done. Uh, it was successful, so that's why we're going over it, but it may not be the best example ever, so I will take some time to break down the next one. The next one that I've done that I just sent uh, about a week ago is about 50 times better than this one, so uh, we'll, I'll show you that one once it's successful. I don't like sharing things until they're successful because that's just fucking dumb in my opinion. All right, so let's go to the um, witness too. So we're going to have the United States Attorney General. They are um, going to witness this document uh, through certified mail. So when they sign for it, that's just like, hey, uh, I got this. I witnessed it. And then later on, if there's ever a problem, uh, you have uh, the freaking United States Attorney General who um, witnessed your document. Then we have uh, Rob, family of Bonta here in California. He's the attorney general. Same thing for him with his own uh, certified mail return receipt requested. You can get a bunch of certified mail little ticket things from the um, um, post office. And you can just take them home and you can use them like this. And and then this one here I put on here, all copies mail will be original wedding signatures, autographs by my hand and notarized individually. That's just cool. Uh, and this is uh, regarding alleged Amtrust financial debt on account number. I took the account number out. Policy number, I took the policy number out. Workers' comp policy. All original communication is enclosed with documents, uh, with document headed to Steve, uh, family of Wolf, location, as they are the debt collection agency working for Amtrust financial. No dispute is current or active involving your offer, and acceptance is contingent on the following on the conditions in this affidavit. So basically what that means is, yo, we're buddies, we're pals, we're friends. I don't have a problem at all whatsoever. There's no, there's actually, it's called honor and dishonor. Those are the two words that I'm not going to get into too much because it's really complicated. But basically like uh, uh, in a court of law, only disputes are seen. So what you're doing is you're like, yo, what's up, boy? Like, hey, no problem, dog. Got your shit. Love it. Like, here's the deal want to pay you desperately, want to get on my knees, suck you off desperately. But there's a couple of things that I need you to just clarify before we do that. Uh, and that's kind of how you want to communicate in, in all of your communications. Um, just like that. If you do it just like that, you will not get into what's called dishonor. Dishonor is where you get fucked. And they write all of their bills and they do all of their shit to try to create as much dishonor as possible. So if they can piss you off, if they can freak you out, if they can get you fucking, uh, that's perfect for them because that's called dishonor. And in a court of law, whoever goes into dishonor loses. So you do not want to go in dishonor. You want to be like, yo, what's up my boy? Uh, you know, that's kind of how you want to do it. Um, so it says there, no dispute is active or current involving your offer. And acceptance is contingent on the conditions in this affidavit. Now, uh, like I said, this was involving a workers' comp audit. So there was an audit done, whatever. Um, they just kind of cooked up this number, 13 grand or something like that. And it's like they just kind of made it out of thin air. And then, and then this kind of how this whole thing started, right? So uh, all the original documentation, everything they mailed me, all the statements, Every single thing they ever, ever, ever mailed me went into a parcel and it went with the conditional acceptance. Now, why is that? Because you're accepting, you're accepting all of the communications. And then when you get a communication and you accept it and you don't rebut it, it becomes truth and law. So their 13 grand wasn't true at all. And then because I didn't respond to it, it became true in a way. So what you're doing with the conditional acceptance is you're collecting up everything you're sticking it all inside the parcel and you're sending it all back. You're like, yo, you guys sent me all this shit. Like, here's the conditional acceptance and then here's all your shit back because I'm rejecting it. So that's how you like basically reject it, right? You want to collect all that shit together and send it back. All right, let's go to the next section here. We have the conditional acceptance to your offer establishes a common law contract between us uh, under the postal rule. Which states? The postal rule. I have a light right here, so I have to kind of like duck and weave like a boxer to read this. So also known as the mailbox rule or deposited acceptance rule is a term of common law contracts, which determines the timing of acceptance of an offer when mail is contemplated as the medium of acceptance. So blah, 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 blah. Basically, this is really this is a really complicated way of saying that when you when you start to clear up the words 
uh, about postage and about courts and about banks and about it, uh, all the all the roads kind of lead to the same place. It's kind of creepy, actually. So so really, the 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 post office and when you send mail, it's it's technically when you do it like registered mail, it becomes a court. So I know that's really confusing, but I'm trying to make this not t- t- twenty hours long or something. So. When you serve someone documents, you're basically like creating the court, essentially. You're creating, uh, you're serving them documents, kind of like when you hear of someone getting served documentation for something outside of their home or something like that about, let's say, um, you know, alimony or child support and they get served documents. It's kind of the same idea. You're serving someone through the mail. So that's what... uh, this particular section is all about. You're just telling them, hey, once you guys sign for this, we have a contract. Section A, definitions. Now, the way definitions works, in in this first conditional acceptance, um, you can put whatever definitions in here you want. You could literally, I could go in here right now, and I could go like this, and I could go like this, uh, and I could go like this. I could say, I could say the definition of elephant This is going to blow your mind. This is the way fucking law really works, right? You could literally say elephant, and then you can say, uh, you can define elephant as uh, a four-legged, no, no, let's make it really, really stupid. Let's say say a two-wheeled cart painted red used for the purposes of of transporting carrots from Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania to Ohio uh, on Sundays. You could literally do the dumbest shit you've ever heard in your entire life, right? Now, for the remainder of this fucking document, the definition of elephant is a two-wheel cart painted red used for purposes of transporting carrots from Pennsylvania to Ohio on Sundays. And that's how it's always going to be. So what if I called this definition um, United States? Now, United States from that point forward in this document and all through any court cases or anything is going to be called, and they have to go by my definition, a two-wheel cart painted red used for purposes of transporting carrots from Pennsylvania to Ohio on Sundays. It's fucking insane. So uh, I didn't do that on this document. All I did was I actually took already previously defined words from certain sections of Black's Law. I like Black's Law 4th edition the most. So this first one, consideration, Black's Law 4th edition. So we have the definition. Consideration is not to be confounded with motive. It means something. Here we go. Consideration means something which is of value in the eye of the law, moving from the plaintiff, either of benefit to the plaintiff or of detriment to the defendant. Um, nothing is consideration that is not regarded as such by both parties. This is really important. So if you, you see this a lot in relationships, you know what I mean? If I give you something and I say, oh, but I gave you, you know, uh, but I hung out with you last weekend or, oh, but I gave you uh, that chocolate box or whatever, like like the nice guy, he's always like trying to get laid. Oh, but I... um. Oh, but but I uh, I always take your calls and I always listen to you whenever you're upset and you want to talk about other boys, you know. So nothing is consideration. Now consideration is, uh, God, these definitions. Man, I'm telling you. So so here we go. Any benefit conferred or agreed to be conferred upon the promiser by any other person to which the promiser is not lawfully entitled. Uh, let's see. So basically, uh, consideration is like something of value that you're exchanging. But keep in mind, this is really, really important. Nothing is consideration that is not regarded as such by both parties. If I give you this fucking gun, and I say, here you go, and you're like, I don't like guns. Guns scare the fuck out of me. I don't want it. Uh, it's not consideration. If, if, you, if you don't, if the other person doesn't consider it, you know, as such. It's like, it's not valuable to me. Like if I were to give you a bunch of mud and I'm from a mud village and I'm like, oh dude, check out this mud. And you're like, it's not, it's not, it's not consideration for me. It's not consideration. 
So the definition of consideration is, you know, something of value, you know, and value is totally subjective. So you got to think like something I could consider valuable is completely different than what somebody else would consider valuable. So keep that in mind. Consideration has to be regarded as such by both parties. Very, very fucking important. And I'm, I'm in the middle of writing a whole thing on the eight points of a contract, but just for the sake of this conditional acceptance, uh, we're going to go through some of this stuff, right? So just a whole lot of different definitions of consideration. Then we have the definition of failure of consideration. Uh, this term does not mean a want of consideration, but implies that a consideration originally existing in good has since become worthless or ceased to exist or been extinguished partially or entirely. Um, uh, it means that sufficient consideration was contemplated by the parties at the time of the contract was entered into, but either on account of some uh, innate defect in the thing to be given or non-performance in whole or in part of that which the promisee agreed to do or forbear, nothing of value can be received. So, so if I say, look, dude, I'm going to, you pay me $500 and then, I mean, this is an insurance policy. So it's like perfect failure of consideration, like just annihilates this whole fucking audit, right? Like just blows the back of their fucking skull out because think about it. You, I'm paying you because I'm saying like, yo, if there's something that happens with my workers, then like, you're going to help me like pay for it if something happens. Right. And they're like, oh yeah, no problem, bro. I got you. And then you pay them, but there's never any claim on the on the thing, on the insurance policy. So, so it's failure of consideration. They promised that they would do something, but then that thing never happened. So they never gave you anything of consideration. So, so without proper consideration, psh, no contract, bitch. So that's kind of how that works. So that's kind of why I put that definition there. Want of consideration. Again, that one's from Black Saw Fourth Edition. And that's all I put in the definition section because it's honestly all I need. Like the, already, without even writing anything more, this whole thing is basically over. Like they're fucked, literally, and they know it by the time they read that, right? So then we have section B, facts and events. No claims are ever made on this policy. Again, where's the consideration? Like there is no consideration. It's a want of consideration. Thus, there was no contract. Thus, there is no contract. Thus, there is no debt. <laughs> Bye-bye. That's the way it works. It's really, really simple. Conditions of acceptance. Now, if they want to go forward, uh, you know, it's like I said before. It's like, what's up, boy? My boy. I love you, dog. What's up? Uh, I am so down with your offer. Uh, but I just need a few things to, in order to do this. So please provide a detailed breakdown as to exactly how this debt was calculated to be. Tables, exact mathematical equations, etc. Please provide evidence of consideration beyond any reasonable doubt that equa equals or exceeds all money paid into this policy throughout the life of the policy in relation to the number of claims made on the policy, which are zero, which means you're fucked, which means you're fucked. Provide evidence showing beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is no want of consideration as regards this policy. Can't be done. You're fucked. Uh, uh, number four, as per my rights under the FDCPA. Now, the FDCPA is basically... Um, when you have a credit card company or when you have uh, any company, I'm sorry, when you have any company that takes on the debt as a debt collector for another entity, whether they bought the debt or whether they're just acting as an agent for that debt, it falls under the FDCPA. So the FDCPA explains and has exact rules as to what debt collectors can do and what they can't do. So basically, uh, one of the things that you can do under the FDCPA, which is dope, which is why you should let all your shit go to collections before you do this, because you have way more power after the shit goes to collections than you do before it goes to collections. Like you're you're literally like, you, you don't think so. It doesn't make sense. You're like, oh, I'm in collections. This sucks. No, 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 no. Once you're in collections, you're like, you're like locked and loaded. You're like fucking Rambo. You're like ready to go. So, so under FDCPA, you can actually uh, force them to provide evidence, like tons of evidence, like, I, uh, you know, proof that McCarthy, Burgess, and Wolf owns this debt or has been assigned this debt, full account history since the inception of this account, including all fees added from the beginning of time up to present, uh, cease all communications and collections of this debt until all conditions of this conditional acceptance have been met, 
uh, positive proof that this debt is owed, not simply a computer printout, any other aspects of the FDCPA that need to be shown in order for a debt to be considered validated. That is a fucking pain in the ass to do all that. And some of that probably isn't even possible to even offer. And now, if they can't get it to you, bop, bop. Bye bye. The debt's gone. Uh, so, star uh, a couple star points I just put here. Please have all above points uh, sent back as a notarized affidavit of truth by an individual human swearing under oath the truth and accuracy of each point. So, uh, uh, the business itself cannot write an affidavit of truth. Only an individual human being can write an affidavit of truth. So, what you're saying is, is that one human being in your business has to stick their long, disgusting fucking neck out on the chopping block and say, I say that all this information is true under penalty of, of perjury, right? And they, they sign it and they get it notarized and they have to send it back to you. So uh, when, you, when you do that, you, you make them sweat because they're sweating now. They're like, oh, do you want to do this? Like, no, nah, bro. <laughs> no, nah, bro. You want to do this? Like, no, nah, dude, I'm good. I'm good, dude. I'm, uh. So it's one of those things where uh, you, you, you put them against a wall and, and nobody wants to fucking be that guy. So nobody bees that guy. And then they, they only have so much time to respond to this thing. And if they don't, then it's fucking discharged. So uh, next part, Precedent has already been set that until this debt is fully validated, legal action is not permitted. That's from Spears versus Brennan. So you guys can use that. Um, and that's true. That's actually true. They can't do shit uh, until they uh, handle it. Limitations of time. Now, now I know a lot of guys out there, they like to be fucking assholes and uh, they just love to put like 14 days or 10 days or something like that. You can do that. Uh, I'm not trying to be a dick, as you can tell in this conditional acceptance. I don't recommend it. I don't think I think it's it's it pushes you into dishonor. But there's a lot of dudes out there saying a lot of different things. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. Check out other people's shit. I don't give a fuck. This is free. Fuck you. Uh, that's basically how this works. So basically, uh, I, I'm always thinking in my head, how can I create honor and not dishonor? Which means, how can I? Uh, basically, uh, calmly and, 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 and happily and with Mary, how can I just kind of hand the ball back to him and be like, yo, brother, like we're playing a game of basketball uh, rather than, you know, pull out my pistol here and start firing, which that's really not going to be good. That's a fast way to wind up in a courtroom, by the way. Uh, so the, the, the better you can do in terms of not creating dishonor, uh, the farther away you will be from getting forced into a courtroom. So if you want to get forced into a courtroom, <laughs> here you go, brother. This is how you do it right here. Take that bad boy and uh, go fucking nuts because you're going to wind up in a courtroom and it's not going to be fun and it's going to fucking suck unless you are uh, extremely good at this shit. I, I don't even know if I could do it. So... Uh, I'm assuming most of the people who are going to be watching this, uh, all my fans, love you. Um, you want to, you, you probably want to stay out of a courtroom. So fucking stay out of the courtroom. And the way that you do that is, uh, you 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 allow for no dishonor. I mean, here we can, we can actually just go into Black's Law and see if there's a definition of dishonor that I can show you guys real quick. Because this is so fucking important. I mean, the whole point of a conditional acceptance is to not wind up in a courtroom uh, because as long as there's no uh, dishonor and there's no uh, dispute, uh, then then there's no court case. So uh, it's really simple, but you start fucking firing off rounds and being a dick with a big fucking hard dick uh, and you're gonna, it's not gonna be fun. So let's see. Dishonor. Dishonor. Dis. Dishonor. In mercantile law, hold on, let me just scroll down. In mercantile law and usage, to refuse or decline to accept a bill of exchange or to refuse or neglect to, bill, to pay a bill or note at maturity. So essentially, it's to tell someone to go fuck themselves. Um, so if you want to do that, be my guest and have fun in court. So, uh, from the point of the signature receipt of this condition of acceptance, as per the postal code listed above, you have 30 days 
It's a lot of time. I give them a lot of time. From receipt to fully address each of the above points, point by point. Otherwise, the matter will be considered uh, settled and paid in full with regards to account number blank, policy number blank after 30 days. If no response is given, please send a receipt showing the account paid in full. Um, if additional time is needed, please do not hesitate to request additional time via email to myself or my team, and my approval uh, will need to be in writing uh, to be considered an official extension of time, either via email or via letter. Avouchment, this is basically the notarization. I blah, blah, blah. Now, the person who I wrote this for, obviously, they read the whole thing, understood the whole thing, clarified the whole thing, and agree with the whole thing before notarizing. You do not notarize shit. You do not understand you do not notarize shit you do not agree with. That is fucking stupid. Notar the definition of notarizing is to sign something under penalty of perjury. You're going to commit perjury. You are fucked. Don't do it. So anytime somebody gives you anything, you read it. If you don't understand it and you can't figure it out, don't fucking sign it. Don't fucking notarize it ever. So I made sure that he understood this. He knew what he was reading. He knew what he was doing. He agreed with everything. He was tracking. He saw it all. He saw the definitions. He saw each of the points. I checked to make sure that he got it. And I could tell he had a really good understanding of what he was doing. And then boom, we had it notarized. Then you get a notarization here. Uh, this is just a standard notarization form. Um, and uh, there you go. So this thing just saved me $13,000. Uh, and it took me quite a lot of work to put it together because it was my first time ever doing this. Um, I was really proud of it though, oh, man, I was like on cloud nine when I finished this thing. So, um, they were calling me, they were, they were sending me emails. They were sending me letters. Uh, as soon as this was signed for immediately, all the communication stopped, uh, 30 days went by and, uh, that was it. They never tried to contact me again. They never did anything ever again. So, uh, yeah, it is, uh, ultra, ultra powerful, powerful, <laughs> conditional acceptance. Um, that breaks down this conditional acceptance and, um, the next one that I'm going to be doing is a million times better. So this one is good, though. This one is like ultra simple. You're going to find a lot of ones uh, online that are like fucked and they're really, really complicated. <sighs> they're really, really complicated. Uh, this is so fucking simple. This is the way I like to do it. I do like to write something that someone on the other end can actually fucking read. I understand that making it super complicated and making it almost impossible to read is like a nice, like offensive tactic to prevent the other person from responding. I think that's fucking dumb. Uh, I think that creates dishonor personally. Maybe it doesn't, but I feel like it does. Um, so, so I think it should be, uh, consumable, uh, as much as possible. So there you go. I hope this video helps you guys. Uh, I will be making more videos. I hope you guys check out my uh, theory page on onestupidfuck.com. Uh, click on state national theory. Uh, and I'm currently working on the next point, which I believe is point number 37 or 36, um, which is going to be the eight points of a contract. And then I'm also working on another point. God, I forgot what it was because I haven't written in about a week. So uh, there you go. Hope you guys love it. I will be creating a section on my website and putting this on there, probably putting this on my YouTube as well. So, all right, guys. Thank you. Love you guys. Bye-bye.